Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Now, judging by your comments, you wanna know a little bit more about Alice, my 100 ton forging press. You know, and how I built her and how, what I would change in the future so you can build one for yourself. Let's get started. So to begin with, I started with two inch armor plate that I created a channel out of. Think of pretty much um, a rectangle with an H that goes up and up and down on these slides. You can see here. Now, I just have these plates just floating on the center here that work out great. And then the two bottle jacks are underneath it. Now, you could get away with just one jack. That's totally fine. It actually makes things a lot more simple. Might be a great way to start. But I went with two because I want a whole lot of power on the other side of this thing. All right, now let's get to the actuation here. Um, I went with a loose belt system. You could do many different ways, but this is just what made sense to me at the time. Um, so in this current state, the, the belt's able to just you know whiz right past all of this. No tension is on the actual motor itself. But when I depress this pedal, that, that energy goes down here. And then you can see the wheel is on kind of an eccentric sort of you know system here. So when I push the pedal down, it comes out and it's held down by that spring here. So that's what tightens this belt, which transfers that energy to this one. As you can see, this wheel is a lot smaller than this wheel. I wanted to reduce the amount of drive, the actual speed. You know, this thing's cruising at you know quite a few RPMs. I wanted to slow it down by putting a larger wheel on it. Now, <laughs> continue on here. You have this hub that now sends that energy to these sprockets. Now, how these, as these sprockets turn, uh, it pumps these jacks up and down. Very, very simple. Quite archaic, if you will. Now, as you can see here, I have two different types of sprockets here for different speeds. I, uh, I resolved on this one because it gives me a little bit of speed. I, I wanted it to be a little bit faster. I also have some adjustments here because I didn't know where you know everything was gonna kind of lay out. And as you can see here, I ran these off the other side so I could actually have them alternating, going chick, 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 walking its way up. But I end up in this current system, I have it set up to where they're both pumping at the same rate, but I very well could swap them and have them alternating for a little bit more speed, a little smoother rather than these big pushes. It'll just kind of walk up like that. Now, moving on. So it's one thing to get the, the rams up, to go up. It's another to make them go down. And if you're familiar with bottle jacks, you pretty much have a little nut in here that bleeds all the pressure out of the system. Now, well, I needed those to both spin at the same exact time. So I, licked, I rigged them up with a sprocket and pretty much spun um, cable around each one of them so that they spin in the correct direction. And then I have these, this set of pulley systems transferring that energy from the pedal. So when I depress that pedal, you know, energy goes, pulls up, and then that goes down, uh, and then it spins them in the correct you know, direction. Now, I also needed them to then spin closed so that when I'm no longer pressing the pedal, I, you know, they, they close automatically. So I have it in reverse, the other direction, coming back up to a cluster of springs so that they always tighten up after I depress the pedal. So let me just try and depress this pedal here, and you can see how it works. Happens very fast. Now, as I said, you can definitely get away with just one bottle jack in the center. And if you only went like a 15 ton or what have you, you would it would be a lot faster. This These are 250 ton, which move extraordinarily slow because they're so strong, if you're, you're familiar with hydraulics. All right, now let's talk about my die system. I just pretty much put these little tracks in here and then these little keepers to make sure that nothing pops out of there. Because when these are pressurized, all the force is coming down. It's not really going out in any directions. Right now, it's currently in a bending format, but we can change that very easily by pulling these little nuts over and sliding these out. And then I could put in whatever dies I have. So as you can see here, I have a, a texture tool where two of these come down and pinch it between the two. Um, I have A2 uh, fullering dies that work really well. I have just blank plates so that I can put different type of, of texture and, and like little hand dies in there. It works extraordinarily well. But of course, hindsight is 2020, and I would definitely change a few things. But honestly, this system really does work. It might seem quite Rube Goldberg, but it, uh, it works like a charm and has done for years. And boy, does it forge cold steel like it's nothing. 
But enough of me talking. Let me fire up that electric motor here. I have it hooked up to 220 and you can kind of get a better idea of how it functions. Okay, as you can see, this electric motor is currently spinning, but the belt is not trying to grab. So, but when I do this, it locks it up and it pumps the heck out of those jacks. And normally, when I'm actually working on a piece of, of steel, there's enough pressure resisting these jacks and then you know, eventually resisting this, this pulley wheel so that I don't have to you know, stop with my hand. It just kind of stops on its own. As I'm pushing down this pedal, the fulcrum is here, which transfers my energy upwards that pulls the cable that spins the valve. And then these springs do the reverse and bring them back. All right, so with enough talk about her, let's see what she can do. Right now I have some five by three by quarter steel loaded up into her jaws right now. Let's see her crunch. Now, as you can see, she didn't even notice that material that was even there. I like how slow she is. And I suggest you do the same if you choose to build something similar because having something that powerful really fast is a little dangerous. She's dangerous enough as it is. So I suggest make her nice and slow. It's nice using 50 ton jacks because it's slow already. But yeah, didn't even notice it. You already saw what she does to a uh, solid bar. It's just as easy. I hope you all the best of luck trying to build something similar. Uh, please let me know if you find a, you know, a better way to engineer certain things because there's always overlooks. But um, I, I just, I love it to death and I, I hope I can share some of the joy with you. She's incredible. Necessity is the mother of invention. And that's pretty much what happens with a lot of the kooky tools that I built around here. Let me know if you want to see more of them. Uh, but as always, my friends, thank you for watching.